Tonight we're making acorn squash um, raviolis. What I did earlier was I steamed the acorn squash. I have two acorn squash total and basically all that is is um, cut off the ends, cut them in half, take out the seeds, put them in just a light layer of water, cover it, and then cook it about 350 for roughly around an hour. From there I'm going to scrape out these insides and throw them in my bowl and a strainer to let them drain out a little bit. You got to be careful with these because that skin is really thin and it will rip. You don't want to get any of the skins in here like I did right here. But nice thing is once they're cooked right, it comes right off. So it's not a major deal. Okay, so just like so. Eh, more skin. Get all that meat out. Okay, all set. I'm going to let that drain for a little bit. Set those there. Bust that in all. And from there, I'm actually going to get our sauce going now because I'm doing a reduction. I'm doing some of this year's apple cider. Which, in, when I say this year, it means it was bottled back in like January. And it's been aging ever since. Full 22 ounce bottle of apple cider. Right like so. Our acorn squash has been drained a little bit. Let's see if we can get this in the shot. That right there is just a portion of the uh, liquid that came out of it. We can save it because we might, you never know, you might need it. But the main thing is you don't want a lot of liquid in there because that will destroy the uh, pasta and the ravioli. So now I've got some smoked paprika and salt that I'm going to add to this. I want to mix that in real good. And the nice thing is, is this is cooked enough that it's all just really broken down. I do not need to run it through a food processor or anything like that. So mix it real good. Let's double check flavor. Oh okay. yeah. Do it. Okay. Now the next spot we're going to do this. We're going to go right into a piping bag. So I'm doing a different kind of ravioli, or I'm doing something way different than what you'd expect for ravioli. I'm going to do an agnolati, which is perfect for this type of uh, filling because it's so, so mashy. So let's get it all in there. Like so. Yeah. Throw it on the plate for now. Off. There we go. From here, so I've got some pasta already rolled out. Just keeping it moist under there. That's what I thought. That's going to be too big. So I'm going to do it for now. Okay. Now the way this works is we're going to take our pastry bag, put a nice strip all the way down, like so. Actually got a little bit too much on the end. Go back. From there, I'm going to start rolling it up. Flop it right over. Seal. Continue the roll. Roll right onto that seal. Then we're going to seal it. 
like so. Yeah. That's about it. I'd have to re-roll that. Yeah. I think my fingers are a little too wet. Here we go. And just a little bit more, because that does not want to seal the way I want it to. Seal. There we go. Here we go with a nice little dumpling. Just like that. This will go in the pot and be cooked off. And then we'll finish it in a little bit with our, uh, with our sauce. We, our sauce has uh, been reduced down. This is going to end up being a burr blanc, a cider burr blanc. I've taken it from about the 22 ounce bottle down to about a cup. Now I'm gonna add in a cup of cream. And I'm gonna let this reduce. When I finish this, I'm going to actually finish it with butter. That's where the beurre blanc comes in. It's a butter, a white butter sauce. All right, our sauce is pretty much ready to get for the next step. You notice it coats the back of the spoon real nice. I can run my finger across it. It's not moving. And the flavor is pretty good. Now, when you're cooking this, you're going to get a little bit of it browning around the edges. And you want this to stay clear. And you don't want to add that bitterness from the burn in there. So you take it and dump it in a receptacle to hold it for a moment. Then just quickly clean out your pan. Get all that off the edges and such. Maybe. So when you come when you come back into it, you'll take your bowl back in like so, and it still it stays free of all that all the all that nastiness from the from first cooking process. From here, you're gonna start adding in some butter. For this, I've got about three quarters of a stick of butter. You're gonna add in a little bit at a time. You want it close to room temperature, not too cold, not too hot, not completely melted. You don't want the fat to separate from the butter. And you're just gonna slowly work it in. That's going to create your sauce. Once this is all worked in and nice, that will actually finish your sauce. You can use a whisk. I find just using a rubber spatula works really good for this. You just got to keep it working. As you can see, I've got the ravioli laid out. I'm going to grab a couple for this. show you what it looks like. I've got a nice boiling pot of water. Drop them in. And let these cook. It'll take just a few minutes. You want them to sink to the bottom. That's that's how you know there's no air in them. Um, what will happen is these will cook and then rise to the top, start floating at the top. Once they do that, you want to give them a few more minutes, if that, you know, 30 seconds to a minute, to finish cooking fully, and then they'll be done and perfect. Now we're going to finish these off. A little bit of the sauce in the bottom of the bowl. And I just lost the spoon. That's awesome. <laughs> Fish them out. So, uh, this is gonna be messy. Then just a little bit of the sauce on top, and there you go.